Hey, how's it going? So today we're gonna replace a kitchen faucet. I'll show you. Here's the faucet I got. It's a Plumworks. It's kind of a cheap faucet. It's a you read that? High Art Kitchen Faucet with Sprayer. This is the faucet we're replacing. And you might wonder why are we replacing that? Well, I'm going to show you the problem we're having with this faucet. I get some light here. I've already taken it apart here, here, and here to check for any leaks in these parts. And there's no leaks here. But where we have a leak is if you watch around the base here, I will turn the water on. Oh, it's blocking the light. I'll put it here. I'll turn the turn the water on. You'll see it start to leak here. See it running down here? See all this water. And it happens with both sides. So it isn't just one side leaking. In the middle here, there's a mixer pipe that goes across and comes up the center. Somewhere, I believe, inside of here, the mixer pipe got cracked because it's leaking from both sides. And how I believe it got cracked is I'll show you what probably happened here. Somebody was filling a pan like this or washing the pan, and they probably went like this. And when they went to take it out, see this bend? I believe that cracked something in here. That's that's the problem with these these nice high arc faucets. Is you put stuff on them, and if you live with people that are rough on stuff, they're yanking on it and breaking it. So that's what probably happened. So today we're going to have to replace this otherwise would have been perfectly fine working faucet with a new sixty something dollar faucet, a cheaper one. This was a cheaper one to begin with. I mean, we're not working here in a mansion, you know. We're working with stuff that people can afford. So, a lot of this work, you pretty much got to start. It takes you an hour or so to clean everything out from underneath your sink. Because everybody knows this would normally be full of cleaning supplies and such. So, I've already taken time to clean that out. Get it clean enough so I can get in there and work. Because when that is dripping, it does. It has been dripping slightly down into here, but it didn't make any problems down here. There's no water damage or anything. So, um, I'll quick shut set up, show you how I'm gonna do it, and then we'll get in and get to work. So, if I get this camera here, one thing you need to do. You lay down in here, this is a very hard surface, this corner. It's very painful. I've done it before. I installed this last sink several years ago. Uh, this, you gotta pad this with something. So, what I like to use, in this case, take an old blanket, get some pad in here. You take an old blanket, some pillows, whatever you need. This was already ready to get through the laundry anyway, so it doesn't matter. Take an old, these are real nice, an old uh, beach, beach towel. Lay it down in here. Give you something nice to lay on. Okay. Now, this pot I was demonstrating with, it's also gonna act as a, as a bucket to catch some of that water when you open the pipe. I always have a spare bucket in the back in case there's something really goes wrong. Now let me point out before you start taking pipes apart in your kitchen on your sink, you should know where your main water shutoff for your house or living unit is. Mine is a well. I know how to shut the well off in emergency and how to drain the pressure out of the pressure tank in emergency. You should know how to do that. Um, before you start opening pipes up because if a, if a, something breaks or starts spraying you got to know how to shut it down quick so know how to shut your your main water off before you do any of uh, what I'm going to show you now okay so here I've got the new faucet all the parts oh here I'll show you what to look at here let's see 
this is a very similar unit. What I believe happened here is right here, see there's a mixing tube under here. Uh, you got, uh, this is cold water, hot water, and you have your mixing tube. I believe this tube is probably cracked. We won't know when we take it apart, but somewhere under here it's leaking. So, I'll go ahead and start taking that apart. Uh, some of the tools you might need. Uh, in the, you could do this most of this with just these channel locks or a little pipe wrench. But I made up a few tools. Uh, I made this tool. It's a piece of uh, one inch PVC pipe with a union fitting on the on the end and all I did was cut grooves into it. This is my kitchen faucet nut tool. Real quick I'll show you how that works. What holds this this in this nut here. So what this tool is gonna do, I can reach up behind that sink, get it on there spin this nut on and off to tighten it. Otherwise you have to get up behind the sink. It's very hard with a pair of uh, pliers or something to loosen this. I mean these, they, they, they probably tell you just hand tight on these because they're cheap plastic, but you really can't get any torque on them. And I had a problem in the past where um, you got a, a too much torque, you'll break the nut, but not enough and the, the whole this whole unit would be loose slopping around. And in the past, how I think that probably is broken there, um, about a year after I installed this, this whole thing started flopping around. And I looked up under there, and one of those plastic nuts had snapped in half. Not because I had over-tightened it, but because I think a gorilla got in here and ripped on this and snapped the plastic washer off, and then the whole faucet was... I had to go buy a, another plastic nut and reinstall it but now it's broke again so i believe somebody's been rough handling this or it could just be because it's a cheap unit but you know they say you buy quality you buy once well guess what that didn't happen here because i'm not putting a 250 faucet on this old uh working man sink here all right this isn't anything special Obviously, no fancy countertops here. They're just functional. And obviously, my cabinets aren't the nicest in the world. But you know what? They work. Uh, we'll move on. Okay, so you're going to need some pliers. What I have here is called a basin wrench. I haven't used one of these before. I went ahead and bought one. Uh, hopefully, it'll work for taking the, uh, the uh, plumbing fittings loose. And just extra stuff. I got plumber's putty if you need it. And some uh, pipe tape. We shouldn't need pipe tape, but I got it here just in case. And so I'll go ahead, get some flashlights turned on in here. Get this going. Get some light in here. Okay. Now, what I'm going to... Sorry. The camera's bouncing around so much, but... Okay, so the light's not going to be that great in here, but you know what? You just got to deal with it because it is what it is. All right, so I'm going to show you a few things in here. Okay, so in here, you can see. I have two water shutoffs, this valve and that valve. Before you take any pipes loose, you gotta close those two valves. Okay, so here's what I normally do before I close these valves is third, sorry, it's a tight fit in here. It's gonna be a second. These, these valves right here when you turn this valve in, dirt and dust will accumulate right here. And when you turn this in, this part goes inside the valve. And all that dirt and stuff gets forced into that gasket. 
and it'll usually start leaking once you do that because you, you just forced a bunch of grit and grime in there so i like to wipe this off first you know most people aren't going to take the time to do all this but then they're going to have a a drippy faucet for a couple months until scale and buildup finally stop the leak so here i'm going to clean this other one off too all right now see it's dripping up there right now on me because i ran that water but it's not much so another little step i'm going to take here is to lightly lubricate um hopefully you can see this let me angle that camera a little bit is to lightly lubricate this because like i said when this screws in here there's a little friction and they like to leak because they've been sitting for years so it doesn't hurt you spray a little i got all i got here is some Pam cooking grease is fine enough. I mean, you could use something else, but almost every kitchen has vegetable oil laying around, right? Or it's cooking spray. So you turn this in clockwise to close it. I like to, sometimes you got to wiggle them to get them to move because they're stuck. This one, I'm going to wiggle a little bit, close it, not too tight. A couple times in and out, that gets the dirt. There's a seal in there. I'm rubbing the seal off of that, the dirt off that seal, so it seals tight. Okay, that's snug. Same thing on this other one. A little bit of lube on there. That's a tight fit in here. Okay, so. All the way over here. Get that lube. Okay, now I'm going to tighten this. Closed, open, closed, open, closed. Nice and snug. That should do it. Now, these, both of these fittings are closed. What I'm going to do is go up top and make sure I drain some of the pressure out of that pipe. Because even though there's closed, there's still water pressure in there. So we're just going to open them. Ain't nothing really came out. Check this. Good. Okay, so I'm just going to leave these open so if any pressure builds up, it can just run out. All right, so get this stuff out of the way. Okay, uh, give me just a moment. I'm going to have to. Looks like my flashlight is dying. Okay, everyone, <clears throat> I'm back. I had to change the flashlight battery. Sorry for that. Okay, so as you can see, I've got the two water shutoff valves closed. Now I'm going to have to do, get up under that faucet, take the plumbing fittings down. A little water's going to leak. I got a pot here to catch the water with. It's going to make a little bit of a mess, but a few paper towels ought to cut it. So we'll start getting it going on there. Okay. Let me angle this up for you. Let me show you what I'm looking at up under here. This is what you're going to find under your sink. There's the two drains. This here, this here is called your P-trap. Anything comes down out of your sink drop a ring or something down in your sink it usually falls in here this part you would take apart to get that out all right this hose here that's a return hose drain for the dishwasher so if you ever wonder where your dishwasher drains to that's probably where yours drains some other people have different plumbing but okay uh so there's three you see the fittings under here I can balance this and it'd be great. Nope. Okay. There we go. Okay, so. Oh, it's a tight fit on here. 
I don't know if you can see I have this plastic nut here. See that one's loose, but I got, it's a second one. There's That was just to keep the other one from coming loose that's underneath it. I doubled them up when I had to replace them. And then you have this one here. What we have to do is take this pipe clean, pipe off. That's the, that's the hot water. And this one is the cold water. We're going to break that loose right now. We're going to try our new wrench. I'm going to see if I can put this camera down for now. I'll try to accomplish some of this. Hopefully you'll be able to see what's going on here. Uh, let me tuck this out of the way here. Uh, see if I get some put some light in here for you. Okay. Right where the water is dripping. Perfect. Okay. So hopefully, hopefully you can see there at the angle, probably. All right. So I'm going to take, take these fittings loose. Try this new wrench. This wrench, see it, it pivots and angles different directions. Now we want to come counterclockwise so this direction oh, I gotta, this is very uncomfortable under here but I'll do my best to see how this wrench works get it on here like that if you, hopefully you can see that see that wrench on here right here I'll break that fitting let's see oh turn ooh that worked nice I like that. That was that worked way better than I was hoping for. I've done this before with just channel locks up in here. I mean, you can do it. Just channel locks. You get up there with a pair of channel locks like this, and you know, as you can see, there's not much room to work. It's it's. I mean, in the back, you can do it with this, but it's not the best way. And there might be better ways in the way I'm doing it but I'm doing what I can do okay okay I'm gonna take this off it'll probably leak a little bit of water on me move that catch basin over a little bit it's leaking a little bit not too bad not bad at all okay let that drip a second Move this over a little bit. I'm going to tuck this the other side here. There we go. Wipe that flashlight off. Wipe that wall off. Make sure my my lens is still clean. Uh, I got a little smudge on this lens. Okay, people. All right. So back to this side over here. Use our wrench again. Let me get in here. look at that that's nice that wrench was about eight dollars I think it's worth every penny just let that drip into that pot there now another thing to keep track of uh, mine were already organized here hot water on the left cold water on the right you might want to look where yours are going when you put it back together you want to make sure hot water on the left cold water on the right um, what could happen somebody might have plumbed them in weird somehow or maybe they're stacked one here or one here one above the other or one below the other uh, take note of which one's hot and cold so when you reassemble it you don't have it hot and cold on the wrong side okay okay so now we have to do this is our sprayer this, not sure how that comes apart the 
the sprayer unit. Um, looks like it could probably pop that loose with a screwdriver. Okay, I got a screwdriver. Pop these fittings here. Oh, there we go. See that? Okay, there's a clip on there coming off. I'll show you how that comes off later. Maybe I'll. Again. Let me just flip that off of there. Remember, it's a tight fit I'm laying on my back in here. So. There we go. Okay, now I'll take the uh, sprayer down. Sprayer attachment. Okay, so now the bottom of your sink, you got cold, hot. Okay, now disregard it. Like I said, I had to replace this before. So I have an extra nut on the back of here. But I actually did that. I had room for them. Since this nut had broken off before, when I replaced it with a new one, I had a couple of these spares. I put an extra one in there, so if it was to break off again, I could just tighten the next one up and never have to take it apart again. You know, it just depends. Extra stuff that normal that nobody would normally do, but I had them, so I used them. So now I still got extras here. I'll probably put them back on the new one in case they ever break again. Now, you can see this nuts up here. It's really hard to get up in here when I am. I'm gonna try that new tool I made. Where is it? I can find a new tool. Here it is. Hopefully this will get up in there. I haven't tried this before. I did not set this up or do anything. You're seeing in real time here. Okay, so this slides over here. Get it on there. Okay, it's really tight. I had put some uh, plumber's putty on there to keep them from rattling loose because like I said they've come loose before so I didn't want them to get loose again so the problem is now I'm gonna have to put a little torque on them to get them off but I made this tool so I should be able to do that there we go it's going come on come on there it goes. There it goes. Now normally, like I said, I've done these in the past. You gotta get up in there with a pair of channel locks to try to get that off of there. Put out the special tool. You can buy a special tool made for these online. I've seen them. But they didn't have one at the hardware store. So I made my own. All right, that one's broke loose. Hopefully I can spin it off now. I'm gonna get it down as far as I can. Ugh. Whew. It's a lot harder than it looks. Everything's overhead. There it goes, starting to get loose. Now I can spin it down. See it moving quicker now. Okay, see that not coming off of there? There it is. Okay. They had a little gasket there. See, it's kind of a little bit messy here. All right. Uh, take this other one loose. Uh, my tool might not work for our, it might be too long to get, eh, I think I can get in here. Let me see if I can get it loose. Oh, there it went. I didn't have to use a, any extra tool this time. Let me see. I'm trying to get the camera where you can see here. Okay. See, I'm spinning this loose. See how that locks on to that, that knot right there in the grooves? Otherwise, like I said, you'd have to get up there with a channel locks or something. It's gonna be a pain to get channel locks up in there. I've done it before. It's not fun. Okay, so spin this all the way off come on 
it's almost there there okay that's loose so your faucet's completely loose now I'm just gonna push it through it's like clean this up oh we gotta watch these holes are gonna be sharp a lot of times let me quick move that faucet there we go wipe this off Got a nice clean surface to work with here okay now we've got not all faucets have this we have this uh we've got this extra sprayer unit here okay so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna push this hose right, right up out of the way it's out of the way now i can get my tool in here okay, watch this tool hopefully you can see this this tool up and out See, it's going to be too fat, it looks like, to fit inside the tool I made. I thought it would fit. This one's a little bit different size, I think, than the other one. Okay. See, it doesn't... It, oh, wait, there it goes. Just a tight fit. Oh, wait. No, it still didn't make it. Oh, there. It broke off, so it's even better. Quicker. That's one way to do it. Shove that out of the way. There we go. Okay, now we'll go up top, take a look at what we got. Oh, here. Show you real quick. All oh, the water dripping into that pot. That's why you have something on there to catch it. It's gonna keep dripping for a little while. Whew, all right. So, here's your Here's your sprayer unit. Get it out of the way. Okay. Here's the faucet come off. Ooh. Look at that nasty gum. Now I got well water, so we're probably gonna have more gunk than other people. Let me quick set this camera up here. Tripod. Try to let you see what's going on here. All right, so I got here all that gunk accumulates. This is nasty stuff accumulates under your sink faucets in there. Oh, look at this one's got a. That actually looks like metal. That might be brass or something. That might even be brass. It might be pretty decent. I don't know where it's leaking. It's leaking under here. See all this gunk. See all this crust? This kind of crust you get from uh, water leaking, mineral deposits. So somewhere in here, probably probably over here, it was probably where it was leaking at. That's where all the mineral deposits were. It really hadn't been leaking that long. So at least I haven't noticed it leaking. I only noticed it leaking in the last week. So, that's the old one. I'll show you what I'm going to do here. Now all we're going to do here, you, this is what they call a four hole. You got one, two, three, four holes. Uh, a lot of times you'll have a three hole, one, two, three hole, or a two hole. This fourth hole is, like I said, is for the sprayer unit. Um, Sometimes you can have just a one hole for just the center one. Uh, you need to know that when you go to buy your faucet, how many holes you have. You don't have to use them all, but you do have to cover them all. If you got holes out here and you buy a one hole, you have to get a plate to cover those holes. Okay? Also here, they do make a cover plate for this if you don't want to use this hole. By the time you buy all that, you buy all the cover plates and everything, you're better off just buying the uh, putting all that money in and just getting a regular four hole or whatever one that actually works best. All right, so I'm gonna shut this video off. Or I'm gonna I'll, I'll come back in a minute. I'm gonna clean this surface up a little bit better, scrub it, and then we'll come back to you. Okay, so I'm just gonna take this quick. 
This is a non scratching pad. There's a little bit of grime here. Whenever you take that off, you're going to have a little bit of grime underneath it. A little dirt, whatever. Now remember, like this stainless, you have like that scratch stainless surface. It's all directional. Uh, basically, they call it the grain. If you had something that's going to scratch, you'd want to go with the grain while you're cleaning it or it's going to look really bad. Most places are, most, most scrubbers are not scratching now, but not all of them. You have to, you have to check the specs on them. This one's somewhat stained. It's not all going to come off. I mean, this is an old sink. This sink's, uh, I, know, I think this sink's 25 or more years old. Maybe 30 years old, this sink. So, that's all cleaned up. So, we're going to get the new sink out. Okay. So, we're going to install this sink. I want to quick show you something here. Okay, here's the sink. Okay, look, this this got name brand of Plumworks. Uh, doesn't matter what brand it is. Here's how they look. You have the nut here that goes on the bottom. Okay, see how that works. These are nice because it's a quick connect. Just snaps right on for that center piece. Just clicks on and seals it right up. Okay, so what you got to look at here, something to remember. These knobs, you don't want to put this thing on backwards. Get the whole installation backwards. These knobs turn out like this. See this? They don't always say this. Sometimes it'll say H or C. H for hot, C for cold. This one has a red dot, blue dot, hot, cold. But you want to make sure you put it on. Left is hot, right is cold. Now see how they turn out like that. Now, if you were to not be, you know, you get in a hurry, you put this in the sink, you mount it all, hook everything all up, and now. The valves don't open right, and the valve's gonna turn this way and hit the wall, not work. So we wanna make sure we got the front. There's a front on here, front and back. Okay, and there's a base plate. Got this base plate here. Let's quick see how it fits on here. Okay, that's not the right way, see? There it is, it's got this little lip, snaps right in there. See that? Nice tight fit. Nice tight fit right there. Again, double check front and reverse. Okay, we're gonna take this over here. Drop it in. This little gasket looks like it's gonna move around under here. So once we get it all mounted before we tighten it, we're gonna make sure that's properly lined up up top here. See, there's a little slop too, I like to do don't have to be perfect but once I get everything almost snug I'll make sure this is centered centered in there so it looks nice when it's done it's not all crooked okay so grab the new nuts we got a new nut here here's your little hardware package this one comes with a, a tag it's your model number Service number, item number 673-6808. This is a Plumworks brand. Do not remove this tag. They keep that on there, so if you need to service it, you got the information. So what we're going to do is remove that tag, because guess what? It's going to get in our way when we're installing it. And I don't feel like fighting with that tag. So, around here... Turn the flashlights back on. Get some light going in here. All right. Okay. Oh, let me get the tool. There we go. All right. So we're gonna get back in here. Try to get this all put back together. Okay. Pick this up. Uh, I'm just checking the angle of the camera. Hopefully you can see good. 
try to get the light. Okay. Okay, so there's the two installation nuts. Put that on there. Now, these didn't come with gaskets to put in here, so... Some faucets would also say, we have plumber's putty, you put plumber's putty around the base just to seal it. This didn't call for that, but I don't think we need it. So these just spin them up snug. See the center here? Spin that up snug, spin this snug. Just centered up. Not quite centered. Loosen a little bit. Alright, about there. Alright, about there. I'm going to go up top. I'll be right back. Make sure it's centered up. Okay, it looks good up top. All I'm going to do is snug these up. Just give this, hopefully you can see that. Snug that up. Obviously you can't get too tight on these. They'll just break. They're plastic. If you want them getting snug though, you don't want it rattling. That's snug. Like I said, this is an extra step. You don't have to do it. If you saved them from your old faucet, like I said, I've had these break before because that somebody hooks a pot or a pan on there. That, that nut will just snap and the whole thing is rattling. And then you got to take all the plumbing loose to get another nut on there. So I'm just going to take this other nut. In case that was to happen, guess what? I can just tighten the next one up. Because it ain't costing me nothing. So I'm just going to run that one up behind it. They used to make all this stuff out of brass. It would never break. They used brass because it wouldn't corrode. It would corrode, but it wouldn't corrode badly. So look, I'm just going to lightly snug those so you don't rattle loose. Just a little backup. Plus, by lightly snugging them against the other one, it'll keep the first ones from trying to rattle loose. Just from regular, just from everyday use, vibration and such, they could rattle loose. Now that should keep that from happening. Now let's discuss these hoses. These hoses, they uh, they say these hoses. They're about seven, eight bucks a piece, and there's different lengths, different sizes. Um, normally, you should replace these hoses. They make them out of all different types of materials. These are stainless steel braided outside. Uh, normally, they say just replace them when you replace the faucet because usually the faucet lasts so long, the hoses are old enough and in bad enough shape. You replace them, you don't want to risk a, a leak. Well, in this case, like I said, this faucet has only been on there a couple years. And I don't, these fittings, mine screw onto these PVC fittings. And the last time I had to change these, it almost stripped out the fitting and would have been a nightmare because this is all glued together. And this goes in the wall. I almost had to rip the whole, I almost had to rip a hole in the wall and replace all this stuff. Because these fittings almost stripped out and it wasn't because I cross threaded them there's a rubber gasket in here and by the time you started on there with the rubber gasket and put tension on it it was pulling the threads so I got lucky enough to get it on there properly and they didn't I don't want to mess with these if I don't have to so 
These hoses are only several years old. The, uh, the rubber seals, make sure the rubber seal is still in here. There's a rubber seal that goes in here. Sometimes it would stick. Let me quick show you where to look. Because that would be important because it would leak when you... The rubber seal seals up against this surface right here. Right here. You would want to make sure that rubber seal isn't stuck in here and make sure it's still in your fitting. Okay. And I looked to see if I could buy new rubber seals and guess what? They don't sell rubber seals. It's a replacement seal because they want you to buy a new hose. But we're gonna make this work. Okay. So, then you remember here, this side, left side, that's hot. Our, pop, our pipe over here, hot fitting, hot hose. We'll make sure we're going to the correct side. Put this on here. Tight fitting here, sorry. Hope you're getting a good shot there. Okay, you want to make sure you thread that on properly straight. If you start to turn it and it automatically doesn't want to go on, make sure it's straight. And you should get a couple good turns on there before it starts getting snug. Okay, so that's snug. Take our new wrench here. I believe it goes... Well, it was that way off, so you flip this over. Go the other way to go on. Lefty loosey, righty tighty, clockwise tight. So here's what I'm gonna do. Come on, grab. There we go. There we go. Now this thing, you don't have to tighten it like you're putting lug nuts on a car. It's got a rubber gasket, so you get it to where it's good and snug and doesn't really want to move much anymore. Right there. That should be tight. I'm going to go ahead. Right side cold. You could also label these hot and cold if you wanted with a marker. These, uh, the shutoffs if you needed to. Hot and cold with a black marker sharpie or something. See how that, ooh, that wrench works. Beautiful. Man, that was worth every penny at $8 it cost me. I'll tell you what. That's where they get you. New faucet's only 60 bucks. Then you gotta buy an $8 wrench. Then you gotta buy this option and that option. It's all the little things is where they get you. Pipe, pipe fittings and pipe dope and, uh, Teflon tape. Next thing you know, $60 faucet costs you a hundred bucks. Oh, uh, I'm gonna have to stop a minute. Got a phone call coming in. See, it might be important. Give me just a minute. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Sorry, that was a very important doctor's office calling. You gotta answer those calls. Uh, okay, so these, they're tight. Next, we're going to put this sprayer in. I'll drop it in through the top. Okay. Just for, I want to show you how something you could do here. Uh, what you would use this plumber's putty with a sink a lot of sinks what you do is you take this plumber's putty this is a non-hardening clay basically it doesn't want to come out you get a, a tool here get some of this out okay this work it around a little bit loosens it up okay sometimes around the the bottom of a faucet to seal it like this piece down into the 
I'm going to make a little, take a little bit of this, just squeeze it around here, just to show you how this works and help seal this. See, it's going around here. You leave it hanging over the edges, doesn't matter. You wipe it up when you're done, the excess. So, you see how that looks? Put it in the hole. Once you tighten it up, it seals. Uh, this has a, a plastic uh, rubbery gasket here, which I checked it. That should seal that well enough. Um, some people, you could do, before you put this in, you put a little bead of this plumber's putty around that. When you crank it down, then when you're done, you wipe it off. Um, you don't have to on this. Uh, on some sinks, on some faucets, it requires you do that. So if it says so in the instructions, you would do that. It's okay, so we're going to get up under here. Hopefully you can see this. Tip this. Okay. We're going to. Okay. I got a metal washer left over from the old one. So that'll actually. I'm going to use that. So you don't have to use that, but I'm going to. Just so it mounts it a little bit better. Okay, it's gonna be tricky because it wants to wobble around. So you get this started on there. Just spin it up. It'll take a minute. It's three inches of thread, so I'm gonna hold it there and just obviously it would go on easier without that washer, but that washer's gonna help hold it in place, so. Take the extra extra minute or whatever it takes to do that. I'm not using my tool because the whole thing would just spin right now. Okay. Now we're gonna get this centered in the hole where we want it. About right there. I'm gonna go up top, make sure it looks good. Looks good up top. Take my. Now oh, look here. Let me show you. I've done this before. You get up in here with channel locks because you can't get a grip on this. Until you go like this. Try to spin this thing. Now this is plastic. It breaks real easy. You gotta be gentle. That's why I bought this. Or I made this tool. Let's get up there. Now this is plastic. If I over tighten it, it's just going to snap it. So I'm going to snug it. I'm going to go up top, give it a little wiggle, squeeze out that extra gasket material. Give it just a little more snug. Right there get it too tight it'll break off okay so now we got that now I'm gonna drop the pipe in okay so he dropped us in now let me show you oh there's a little cobweb Okay, so this fitting here, this fitting here, snap on over here, there's a seal on here to cover, there's an oh here, I don't know if you can see that, hopefully you can see, you pull this little cap off of here, there's an o-ring here, this just, this is a great, great design, it just snaps right on, and you're good. Uh, Let's say on this faucet, if you didn't have a fourth hole and didn't want to use this sprayer, if you didn't want to use this sprayer because you didn't have a fourth hole, or for any reason you didn't want to use the sprayer, this hole is going to spray water. 
it comes with this optional cap you would snap this optional cap on there to seal that but I'm going to use the sprayer so I'm actually going to take this feed it through here it's got some curly cues in it because it, it was packaged that way put it up here push it straight up until it clicks on there there click down make sure it's sealed good all right so this plumbing is all done under here now everything's tight we're gonna go up top take a look at everything okay Whew. everything's actually going pretty good there's been a few snags here and there but I mean we're getting lucky here okay let me show you this now See this plumber's putty it squeezed out here you just peel the excess off like that put it right back in the container still good later on you come back with a towel when you clean up just wipe that off so now that's nice and sealed this piece goes down in here like that this is good that's good now we're gonna install okay Quick un unwrap this. Okay, here's the other, the new neck. See, it goes in there, seals right around that. Okay, so just take this, push it straight down on there. See, there's threads here. Now, this, this here, you actually turn it. Now you want to be careful. It should go on easy. If it, you feel tension too soon, it means you're cross-threading it and ruining the plastic threads. This one seemed to line up perfectly. Just keep turning it until it's all the way on there. All right, it's snug now. I'm going to make sure this all works. Okay, that works. Now I'm going to go ahead and get a good grip on it. You don't want to put pliers or something on here. This is just chrome plastic. You'll ruin it. They probably make a special tool, but I find just get a good tight grip, get a good tight. Sometimes it works maybe a slightly damp towel, wrap a slightly damp towel around that, or a slightly damp paper towel. If, if you can't get a good grip, sometimes it'll help you get a little better grip. That one's not damp enough. Just give it a good crank. It's tight, boom. Now see this nice and firm. That'll actually loosen up over time a little bit, but you don't want it too sloppy anyways. You want to stay where you put it. Okay, so this is all done up here. We're going to turn the water on and look for leaks. Okay. Now, here's what we're going to do. We'll turn on the hot water first. See if I can get you some light over here. Counterclockwise. Turn this all the way out. Now it's not uncommon for these spinnings. Okay, that, that one's all the way out. Sometimes I like to go all the way out, just back it here. You don't want to crank it till it's, till it's really tight and stops, because then when you go to close it, it's got a lot of friction. To, so go there in just a little bit. Okay, now this one's not drip, but sometimes they'll drip here. Uh, sometimes uh, there's ways of tightening that packing nut up. This is a packing nut. Uh, you don't want to mess with that if you don't have to, especially these plastic ones. You break the whole fitting, and then you're in a world of hurt. So this one's not dripping. If it was just dripping, say, once a minute or every two minutes, sometimes you could put something under that to catch the water for about two days. Check it, you know, empty it every now and then. And it sometimes it'll just stop dripping because it'll, uh, the calcium or whatever will stop it from dripping. Okay, this one I'm open up also, all the way, just lit right there, wait and see. No drips yet. Now I'm looking here for drip. We didn't mess with these fittings, so they shouldn't drip. By moving them around so much, you could have knocked something loose. Now we're going to check these fittings. And this fitting. 
I'm not feeling it. Now these lines still have some air in them. We're gonna open the top, you're gonna get a big gush of air come out. I'll show you. Usually anyway. There, see? There it goes. See that? Took a second. I'll do this side now. Very good. See, I'm getting air bubbles out of there. Getting air bubbles. Close them. Let it build up pressure for a second. All right, now we're going to get the air out of this line. Because we want to get the air out of the lines and make sure it builds up full water pressure. Do it several times, get the air out of the line. There. Step back. Close these up. Good. Check around here. Sometimes you go through and make sure everything's good and dry. And you want to check it a few times after you're done. Make sure it doesn't have a slow leak. Everything's dry. I'm going to go back underneath here. Now it's got water through all the lines. It's got pressure. There's no air left in here. Just going to check there's no water dripping down these lines. If there was... You'd have to see what the problem is and correct it. We're not going to go into that. We got, we're got actually getting lucky here. Looks like no problems, no drips, no errors. So this is best case scenario. Worst case scenario, it'd have a leak. You just got to spend more time with it and figure it out. Um, and we're not going to go into that. Uh, what I would do now is call this good. And since it's... Uh, since I'm available, if not, you would have the homeowner tell them to just for the next day or two, every now and then, just check under here and make sure there's no, no water dripping under here. If and Make sure a leak doesn't develop or if there's no slow leaks. Once again, these fittings, no water leak in there. No water leak in there. Where it's excellent. They, not uncommon for water to drip out of here a little bit after you've worked this fitting uh, just so you know sometimes if you wiggle it back and forth with a little lubrication on it sometimes that'll clean that gasket out enough to where it'll stop leaking sometimes it'll actually get worse then you got to look into replacing this valve you probably need a plumber to do that unless you're pretty handy all right all right so last look and then I'll New sink or new new faucet once again. This is a the high arc kitchen faucet with sprayer. Four hole. This is eight inch centers. Oh these holes they go this is four inch, this is zero, four inch to eight inch. So there's four inches between these holes on the centers. So that's this is eight inch, this is four in the middle. That you might need that measurement when you go to buy a faucet all right so i'm going to call this over and done probably take me an hour to clean everything up over and out thanks for watching schooler channel bye